Next up, we have a bonus sheet. It's called New to Modern, which means some of the legacy and commander cards are going to be added to the modern. For us limited players, it means we are going to have one card per pack that's going to consist of these cards. Uh, I think there's 40 or 42 cards. One of those two doesn't matter really much. Uh, most of the times you are going to be getting uh, uncommons with this one on this slot there is 20 uncommons if i'm correct or, or very close to that to. and 75 percent of the times this is going to be an uncommon which means these 20 uncommons it is 20 these 20 uncommons are going to be you're going to be seeing them each individual uncommon from the bonus sheet you're going to be seeing it more often than each individual co uncommon in the regular sheet in the regular set so these uncommons will be more uh, have a higher chance of making your deck or higher chance of making the opponent's deck than all the other uncommons, which is very important. So these are going to be important for the set. More important than other uncommons. So yeah, Scott, you want to lead the way? Sure. Angel of the Ruins, five uh, white, white, seven mana total for a five, seven angel with flying. When it enters the battlefield, exile up to two target artifacts and or enchantments and has plane cycling for two. Uh, this effect is huge. Like the effect, the effect is really large when it comes in. The problem is it costs seven, but at least you can plane cycle it. But plane cycling, frankly speaking, for two mana is not ideal. Not ideal. It's a little expensive in 2024. Uh, I still think this is a fine card. I think this one's like a solid C, just because it's a really big impact when it hits the board. Yeah, I'm also okay on a C, but I can see it being worse because... Feels like white is gonna be more tempo based, so I think white is not gonna need this. Give the cyborg X, huh? Give just this, it's crazy good in cyborg. But, uh, yeah, I can see this going to like. I'm on a C minus. I'm actually on a C minus. C minus, because I think white is not gonna, not gonna care about seven mana creatures. Um, maybe I'm wrong, just feels like that's how white is gonna play out. Decree of Justice for an XX. These are reprints, remember, but completely different. They're going to be completely different in this set than in their respective sets. Uh, Decree of Justice for an XX2 white white. Create X44 uh, four, four white angel creature tokens with flying. So it means you pay six mana, you make a 4-4 four, four angel bad. You pay eight mana, you got a 2-4-4 four, four angels, pretty bad. But it's good if you can. So that's kind of where it stops. Sure, 10 mana, 3 angels, okay, if you go there, that, that's crazy. Um, you can cycle it for 2 and a, and a white. When you cycle Decree of Justice, you may pay X. If you do, create X 1-1 one, one white creature, white soldier creature tokens. So for 3 mana, you just draw a card, cycle this. For 4 mana, you get a 1-1, one, one, 5, 6, 5, let's say 6 mana, you get 3 1-1s one, and draw a card. And you can pay more. So this card is pretty flexible. It requires you to have a good amount of mana. You're never, you're not really happy cycling it for, for like less than six or something. Playing it for less than eight, so you do need a lot of mana. So so so, so there are there are there are spawns in this set, right? There are spawns in this set. Um, White doesn't have them, which are gonna be able to ramp you. If there is, if you're gonna be playing like white green. Even this, I think, can be splashed in some slower green decks as well. It is going to be a very impactful late game card. Again, I don't think white is going to be that interested in this. Maybe as a splash, maybe in a little bit of a weird white deck, probably green. Where you can just use up the spawns, two spawns for one angel, that's a pretty good trade. One spawn work for one, 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 that's a pretty good trade. Instant speed for cycling. It's pretty. It's like it's kind of flexible in that late game slot. I think I'm gonna give it a C. Because in some decks, I think in some white decks you don't want it, but in some other decks it's gonna be pretty good late game. Um, I'm kind of surprised that you gave this one a higher grade because you don't you don't have the veil, you don't have the bias of of history behind this one, which is why I think a lot of people are really high on Decree of Justice. Um. This card sucks. <laughs> kind of sucks. I mean, like, pretty much at any mana cost. It's bad. Unless you're getting to 8+, plus, right? It's bad. It's, like, really bad 
four mana, it's really, really bad. Five mana, it's really bad. Six mana, it's really, really bad. Like, six mana, it's, like, barely passable, I think. Like, barely passable. Um, and then, and then if we're only talking about, like, a seven mana plus card, why are we playing this? I think, this this, I, think I think it's going to be a good splash card for green decks. They could just play green cards and better cards. They could play a Hydra, a singular Hydra. I mean, I don't think it's the Hydra. The Hydra is just, like, one single creature. <laughs> sure. But, like, I'm on a D... I'm giving it D. D for decree. I can go on a C minus because I think it's gonna be really good as a splash card in some decks. Not the white card, really. Uh, C minus. I think I, you're, I, you're I, splashing I, for the soldiers, right? Not for the angels. Um, or are you splashing for the angels? Kind of for both are possible, I think, in green decks. I think both okay. are possible. I hope you're right. Yeah. Okay. Hope. Hope so. Just Hope so. No, not a good card. Like I've been, I've been saying how it's not good, but then I gave it like a C. That that really doesn't make sense as well. Um, I can see. Distinguished it. conjurer, one in a white, two mana for a one-two for a human wizard. Whenever you, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life, and you can pay five mana and tap it to exile a target creature you control, then return it into the battlefield under its owner's control. Uh, so. Uh, Two mana, one, two, not very good. Two mana, one, two that gains life on each creature that enters the battlefield, including spawns, including your small ball stuff. That's not super strong. That's not really good. Um, five mana flicker is kind of expensive. That's like pretty expensive. I understand that's value, that's but that's extremely expensive. Kind of clunky. Um, no, I'm off it. I think this is a D. Yeah, really cool. Really cool card. But also the nothing special. Orim's chant for white kicker white target player cannot cast spells this turn. If this spell is kicked, creatures cannot attack this turn. One card that's not worth a full card. Super conditional. People are gonna see this as sometimes. Oh, I'm winning so hard, and then they can't do anything on their turn. I just win. Yeah, it's it's bad. Um, just an F. You don't want to play this. Bye bye. Recruiter of the Guard, two white for a three mana one one human soldier. When Recruiter of the Guard enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with toughness two or less, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Ugh. This, <laughs> uh, I mean, on its own, it's pretty bad. Uh, it really depends on whether or not you have something incredibly high impact to fetch. But as a base, I don't think this card is super good. Like, let's say, let's say you fetch a bear. Right. Let's say you fetch a good bear, like how good, like a conduit goblin. How good is that? That's pretty bad. That's really bad. Yeah. That's pretty. That's really bad. That you can fetch hydro with it. That's really bad. Everything's um, bad, man. Everything's bad. This is a. Uh, you ha you have to fetch some like utility bomb. Like, yeah. You gotta be some kind of like bomb. a Johnny. Yeah, a Johnny. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. If Fetching you fetch a, a medic, good. the best medic invite, probably the best medic. Yeah. Fetching a reef worm, which is coming up, is like still pretty bad. Um, this is a D minus for me. D minus, D minus as well. Can you give, give the Cree of Justice uh, a D plus from me? I, I, I think I'm believing too much in these green decks that already have great late game. That uh, these green decks that I'm envisioning don't really need a card like that. I think, but still gonna try it out. D plus because of that. Uh, D, D minus on this last card. Sevin's Reclamation for 2 and a white, it's a sorcery, return target, permanent card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If this spell was cast from a graveyard, you may copy this spell and may choose a new target for the copy. Oh, that's pretty cool. 3 mana gets something back, 5 mana for flashback, double, double flashback, 3 or less. Yeah, I like this card a lot. It's any permanent. Um, I'm actually gonna be minus for this one. This is nice. It's a lot of value. Yep. Yeah. You wanna be minus? I'll go mm -hmm. C plus. Uh, I, I'm 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 a little bit less high on the uh, slight conditionality of actually needing those things in your bin. Pretty good. Uh, deep analysis three blue four mana total for a sorcery. Target player draws two cards, has flashback, one of the blue, and pay three life. To draw two cards. Draw another two cards. Really good if you um, loot this. 
Yeah, this is uh, this is more powerful if you loot it because it's like actually quite efficient. Um, in the hyper late game, you can also just draw four cards, like for six mana, just pretty dang good. This card is fine. It's fine. Like honestly speaking, you're not even like that happy. You're, I mean, you're not happy casting this for four mana. You're not. You know, raw card advantage. I don't. I don't think is exactly the way of limited in 2024. Um, this used to be an incredible like balmy powerhouse back in its original days but it's it's fine here i think this is like a i think it's like a c i i mean just for like discarding synergies is quite nice what do you give it i'm gonna give it a c as well uh triggers your draw three spells as well uh blue has a looter that's really nice for this one like blue has a looter on common which is pretty good s3 is invocation we're not going by rarity here by the way this is a rare for two and a blue. You may have Astrid's invocation enter the battlefield as a copy of an enchantment you control, except it has. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may exile this enchantment. If you do, return it to the battlefield under its own control. So you can copy an enchantment, it can copy it again and so on, la la la. Too much conditioning even in the deck that really has good enchantments. Sometimes you're going to lose to this because, well, opponent has two amazing enchantments. Uh, but I um, don't think that's enough. I'm just giving this an F. You don't play it. Uh, too conditional to... Again, too much conditionality for it to be good. And gonna be a dead card a lot of times. So, yeah. Kappa Cannoneer. Five and a blue. Six mana for a 4-4 artifact creature turtle warrior. Has improvised, which means your artifacts can help cast a spell. Each artifact you tap while you're done activating the mana abilities, pay for one. This has ward four. And whenever this or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Cap Cannoneer, and it can't be blocked. Uh, whoa! So this is a, uh, by the way, a six mana five five ward four at minimum. And it's blue. At minimum. And it's blue. Blue doesn't have yeah. artifacts. Which is kind of surprising. Blue doesn't have artifacts. So you pair this with like black or red, I guess. Which is which is fine. You can definitely do that. Um, and it's really good on the battlefield, like really good. Like it's really hard to kill. Like your opponent has to be like really inefficient with the removal to kill it. I still think this is a good card. I still think I, I want a ceiling grade for this because it is. You, ha I think you do have to pair with black or red and have specific. Like you do have to have artifacts. I think for this, like I want to cast the sensor in five. I think if you cast the sensor in five, it's pretty good. You know, and I think that's a reasonable thing to ask for. Um. So I'm taking this at like a C plus, and I think the ceiling's like a B plus. The problem is blue just doesn't have artifacts. It's so bad if, you know, if, it, if it's, it's in blue. That's the problem. So I think I'm taking this as a C minus, and ceiling I can see it being a B minus or better. Okay, I can average it to a B. Okay, B, B seems fine. Reef Worm, it's an uncommon. For three and a blue, it's a zero one. That's it. But when it dies, you create a three three token. When that dies, you create a six six token. When that token dies, you create a nine nine token. Oh, this in the mirror with the sacrifice uh, uncommon and with the sacrifice that destroys the creature or a sacrifice common. This is a pain. This is a pain in the ass. You just like two mana, draw two cards, and start upgrading this. Five mana, draw two cards on a flashback, and upgrade it more. It's so cool that this is uncommon in, uh, uh, and end in this set. Mm. Yeah, they bounce it, but there is basically no bounce. Only uncommon blue cards have bounce. A little bit hard to attack into, but not first attack or two are nothing special. Mm. I think this is a C plus because of those black cards. I like a C plus. Um, I think in gameplay this will play out much worse than it reads. Yeah, but uh, and it reads really, really well. That's why it reads really well. Like it, like it has a nine nine text on it. Um, but it's it's kind of hard to get an O one and even a three three sometimes off the battlefield. The six six you should have no problem just attacking. Your opponent has to deal with it. Uh, but yeah, C plus. I like C plus. Very weak against flyers. It needs some help. Flyers are going to be a big deal in this format. I think reaches. This is going to be the format where reaches one of the more important keywords. 
Shrieking Drake. Blue for a creature Drake. It's a 1-1 one, one with flying. When Shrieking Drake enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Uh, if you play this on turn one, you have to control, you have to bounce it, you have, you have to bounce itself. Um, I think this is an F. I think it's unplayable as well. Like, yeah, I think there's an F. Full card that a lot of times you really don't want to don't want to do. No ceiling for this one, I think. Just an F. Basically, always you don't play this card. Buried alive for two and a black. Sorcery, search your library for up to three creature cards. Put them into your graveyard, then shuffle. Mm, not for this set. Not for this set. Not great graveyard recursion. Kind of cool with green, I guess. But you don't want to spend a full card that's not worth a full card, and then to start getting your combos. So just an F. Don't play this. <laughs> three blue uh, black Kirk. dudes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, the, the the fairies. Yeah. Kirk, Kirk, son of Yogmoth. Four Phyrexian Black, Phyrexian Black, Phyrexian Black. So seven mana, kind of. Because Phyrexian Black can be played with either Black or Two Life. This is a 2-2 two -two legendary creature, Phyrexian Horror Minion, <laughs> and I'm already tired of talking. Has lifelink. For each Black in a cost, you may pay two life rather than that mana. So that means it turns basically all Black mana sources in your, in your cost since they're Phyrexian Black. <laughs> Whenever you cast a black spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Kirk, son of Yawgmoth. Huh, okay. So, um, it has lifelink itself, sure. Uh, it, it can grow, but this, this card is... <laughs> okay, so on turn four, you pay six life, and you drop a 2-2 two -two with lifelink. <laughs> Extremely painful. You, you have to play additional black sources after this, and you're not going to be mono black. You're going to have other colors. It's not going to line up all the time. Uh, I understand you can discount, right? It can sort of ramp you into other stuff, but then you're paying additional costs. I think there's like a D minus. I think it's an F. I don't think you can play this in limited and be happy with it. It's, it's very bad. It's, the floor is so low and the ceiling is so low. <laughs> Everything is low about it. It's like, I, I think this is never worth a card in your limited deck. Cool card. Cool card. Commander card. Not for limited decks. Like, there is no good scenario to cast this. And when I say, when that's the case, you just don't play the card. That's it. When there is no good scenario. So why is it a D minus, Scotty? <laughs> why is it, why, wait. Why is the four mana lose six fucking life? Six life. Hey, but you could lose four life and pay it for five mana. Five mana that's plus a life. Flexibility. Like that four life, yeah. It's the same argument with Decree of Justice. It's flexible. I mean, you can. The, the, I think that's the same like saying uh, there's a card that you can pay three mana to lose ten life and opponent gains ten life, but you can also play five mana. You lose five life, opponent gains five, and uh, seven mana. Nobody loses life and nobody gains life. The card is nothing. It's sorcery, but it's flexible. Like the yeah, flexible. I, I was watching a streamer and he said that was good. How? Huh? What? What? I was watching a streamer and he said it was good. This one? So. No, flexibility. Flexibility is great. Uh, but yeah. there are flexible cards that are that no option is ever good. And like, when it, when is this... What option... Give, there is... Uh, like, when a card is like uh, worded like this and shit... Yeah, we, we don't have time for jokes anymore. Let's go. Let's keep on going. Okay, when, when uh, is, what is the perfect played. scenario for this one? No, no, we don't have time for jokes. This is an F. Nadir's oh, you give it an F? Two black. Okay. Yeah, it's an F. It's fine. Um, Nadir's Nightblade, two and a black. Sorry, how much time do you have left? Do you have 10 minutes left? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Okay, yeah, no jokes. Uh, Nadir's Nightblade, two and a black. Uh, three mana for a 1 3 Elf Warrior. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Uh, spawns, sure. Uh, stats, pretty bad. Kind of synergy combo piece, but overall, I, I still think this is going to be quite poor. Like, sure, spawns. It's cute. But I think that's overall going to be quite bad. This is a D for me. What do you give it to? Uh, you know, I'll give it a D. Uh, I'll give it a D minus. I think this card stinks. It stinks. D minus. Pretty cool little Drazis, but still, the, it's a 1 3, so. I mean, okay. the, the cure um, justice? <laughs> uh, a Field Mancer, uh, 2 and a black. I'll read all the cards from now on. Uh, for three mana total, it's a 2-2. Two -two. 
Human Shaman, at the beginning of each upkeep, if you control no snakes, create a 1-1 black snake creature token with death touch. Uh, this is incredibly annoying to attacking on the ground. Yeah. It was already kind of annoying to attacking on the ground because it spawns, but this is a nightmare. nightmare. Like you can just block with this and then create another thing. It's, by the way, at the beginning of each upkeep, so it happens to have, or sorry, it's basically kind of has quote-unquote immediate effect because when your opponent tries to attack you the following turn, you already have that snake. Uh, it's actually quite good. I actually think this is a B. A B plus for me, a B plus. Okay. Kind of has to be removed to be most of the time. I'm this just going to really go, go back to the Nadir's Nightblade. Because you can have, you can make a ton of tokens, right? With yes. the, the, There are like some cards that make a lot of tokens. White has some uncommons and so on. So move this up to a D for me. Because do we put it, give it a ceiling? Sure, I'll give it a ceiling instead. What ceiling do you want to give it? I like a C minus. I think ceiling is a C plus. Maybe C as a ceiling okay. then? C, sure. Right. Toxic Deluge. For 2 and a black, sorcery, as an additional cost to cast this spell, pay X life. All creatures get minus X minus X until end of turn. Alright, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You can, like, always 3 mana. You can do it. Uh, this is pretty good. This is worth to pay the mana. Uh, for this one, I'm on a B plus. Especially if you're playing a slower deck. Even, might, probably even better, so... Yeah, B plus. B plus for me as well. Very powerful. Yeah, you just get to choose what to keep, and you just keep your yeah. largest creature. Always three mana. Super strong. Yep. Um, victimize two and a black for a three mana for a sorcery. Choose tar two target creature cards in your graveyard. Sacrifice a creature. If you do, return the chosen cards to the battlefield tapped. Uh, this can be extremely powerful if you have your yard filled, right? This is like really, really strong. Um, but you do need the creature in play, which is not that difficult thanks to spawns, even bears. Uh, notably speaking, like unlike Blood for Bones, I believe you cannot take the same creature back that you sacrificed, right? Because you have to choose first. Yes, you got to choose first. Yeah, yes. you have to choose first. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, th I think this will be important for some decks, and I actually do think it's pretty powerful. I'm going to take it as a B minus. Same. I'm going to take it as a B minus. As Eldrazi spawns exist, so that that really helps. Yep. Uh, with Eldrazi spawns, no matter what your two cards you're getting, it's going to be great. So. I played it in MKM and it was pretty good. I played it in MKM. Cursed Mirror for 2 and a red. Artifact. You can tap it to add red. As Cursed Mirror enters the battlefield, you may have it become a copy of any creature on the battlefield until end of turn, except it has haste. Alright, 3 mana any creature? Until the end of turn though. I think this is crap. I think it's uh, I think you just don't play this. I think it's an F. You, you I'll too? give it a D minus. It's, it's really bad though. It's really bad. Fledgling Dragon, two red red, four mana for a two two dragon with flying. Threshold, as long as there are seven or more cards in your graveyard, Fledgling Dragon has plus three, plus three, and it has red Fledgling Dragon gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. It's not particularly easy to get seven cards in your graveyard. Seven cards is a lot if you're not self milling. No mill um, in this set, basically. Uh, there's like the green common that mills. It's like okay at it. Puts four ah. cards in the graveyard. Uh, which is pretty solid. But uh, this this card is kind of underwhelming. Kind of underwhelming. It's it's too small. It's too small. So I think this is like a D. Yeah, D, same. Tutu is really bad for four. If it's a Shivan Dragon. But it's it's not that easy to do it in this set. Not a big fan. Not a big fan. Lelia, Leila, Leila, Leila. The Blade Reforged for twin red. It's a two-two haste. Whenever this thing attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Whenever one or more cards are put into the exile from your library, and or your graveyard, put a plus one plus one counter on this thing. Amazing, amazing. Starts attacking as a three-three haste. Grows every single turn. Extremely, extremely powerful. Gives you card advantage. Um, sure, maybe super late game, it's not going to be able to attack. It modifies as well. As well. Incredible. I'm on a high B+, plus, uh, but this can take over the games in the early game. Yeah, B+. Plus. Meltdown, X red. Uh, for a sorcery, destroy each artifact with mono value X or less. Uh, I think... I th I think this is an F with a huge sideboard tick. Yeah, we can do the double X on a cyborg. Amazing cyborg card, but 
on F, you don't know yeah, how good this is gonna be. And you're playing red, which has artifacts. That's the problem as well. Meteoric Maze for four and double red. It's an equipment. When equipped creature gets plus four plus zero, oh, sorry, equipped creature gets plus four plus zero has trample. You can equip it for four. But this has Cascade, which means you're gonna exile the top cards from your library until you get anything that costs six, um, sorry, uh, five or less mana. Which is, this is horrible as a card, like six mana and then hopefully you're gonna get something that's not like a two drop or a three drop. <laughs> and and it's plus, it's plus four four zero trample, that, it's great attacker all of a sudden. But it equips for four in a set that has good equipment, and it's not worth it. I think it's just an F. I think you just don't play this. F. Uh, annoyed Altasaur. One green green seven mana total for a six five with reach and trample as cascade. Uh, very expensive. Reach is good. Cascade trample is, is good in this set. Whatever. Um, but this is a. Uh, this is fine. This is, I think, totally fine. Um, I think this is really good. Enlisted Worm, I think, is the card that we've seen recently, which is six mono, which I think is a lot better. Reach is nice. I, I, I think this card is much worse than Enlisted Worm, uh, even at mono colored. But I think this is like a C minus. I think this is really good in green. I think green is going to have great ways to ramp. It's going to have a good amount of Aldrazi tokens. I think this is an incredible seven drop in green. So good that it's green. I think it's actually a B minus. Wow. Yeah. Branching evolution for two and a green. It's an enchantment. If one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature you control, twice that many plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead. Uh, all the, the there's so many things that work well with this, but it is a three mana do nothing. I think I would rather play those creatures that add counters. I really think that green doesn't need this. So I'm gonna go with a D minus for this one. Probably an F, but start it as a D minus. I don't think green needs this effect. That's the problem. Doesn't I double adapt? The, what, the triggers, what? the triggers. Triggers, the adapt triggers. Oh yeah, it doesn't double adapt. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like other Three cards, no, no, no. Other cards don't, don't double the adapt triggers as well. They don't. Uh, the Wombat does. Uh, the Wombat does? No, it's just like the add wombat one does. more. What? The Wombat doesn't double the triggers. The Wombat says whenever a counter is added, it's a triggered ability that it goes on top of it and then adds another counter. Whoa, really? Yes. Wait, that's real? Oh, whoa. That's real. Wait. Permanents in control have whenever one or more plus and plus counters are put on this permanent, put an additional... Oh, put an additional! Oh, it's not one more! It's not like instead. There is no instead! Oh! Oh my god, the Wombat! What grade did you give the Wombat? Uh... Hold up, you gave the Wombat... What's the full name of the card? Please? Cursed Wombat. Cursed, so it's a C. Um, Cursed Wombat, B minus, B minus, B. I'm on a B and a B plus then. Right. Wow. Okay, no 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 for this card. D minus up to F. I'm gonna start with the D minus. Okay, Priest of Titania, one green. Um for an elf druid. It's a one one. Tap to add green for each elf on the battlefield. There's like no elves, right? I think there's like no elves. There's like disciple frailies. That's not an elf. There is evolution witness, that's an elf. Great card, but whatever. Uh, no, fuck that. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, this is like this is like a D. Oh, I'm on I'm on an F. Uh, green already has good ramp on common. Uh, that's way way better. So, I don't think this you're ever gonna need this thing. I'm just on an okay, F. Okay, I think you can play Priest of Titania and then you can play Evolution Witness and then then you have two mono the following turn. That's pretty good. I mean, that's, that's like, actually kind of like oh, that's actually kind of cool. Okay, D D yeah. D same D D D D. If you have a lot of evolution of the witnesses. Seal one safekeeper for a green, you get a 1-1. One, one. You can sacrifice a land, target it to your control against Shroud until end of turn. Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is that just gives protection to all of your creatures for no mana. This is nothing to sneeze at, especially when you're adapting, doing some combos and stuff. 
it can't be target of spells or abilities. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is good. This is good. Sure, sacrificing a lander is a real cost, and this is a 1-1 one -one that you're playing. But I do think like it protects you for all the... If you're doing all of the combos, it does protect protect the creatures. Um, uh, yeah, that's, this is fine. I'm on a C+. I think C+, is fine. Because it is a 1-1 one -one full card, right? Yeah, it's very annoying to play against. Yeah. Uh, wire Wielded Symbiote. It's a green for a 1-1. One -one. Return an elf. You control to its owner's hand. Untap that creature. Or, sorry, untap target creature. Activate only once each turn. Uh, F for me. Yeah. F for limited. This set, as, as, at least. Even though you can return elves that uh, the witnesses to get more cards, but I don't think you, you care about it that much. Brea, Ethereum Shaper for a white, a blue, a black, and a red. It's a 4 4. And when it enters the battlefield, you get two 1 1 flying artifact creature tokens. For two, and you sacrifice, and sacrifice two artifacts, choose one. It deals three damage to target player or planeswalker. Target creature gets minus four, minus four. You gain five life. All right, four colors is a, is a real restrictive thing. And I think you need to have really, really good uh, reward for playing a four color card, which this one isn't. Which this one, like 4-4 four, four that makes two 1-1s one with really good effects, but they cost two more mana. This one is not. Uh, this one is, I think, a D-, minus, just a D-. minus. I think it's almost never worth to put this in the deck, especially in these colors that are not green. It's even harder to play it. I, I think it may be an F, but let's start as a D-. minus. You got some crazy mana, I guess. Uh, Kalia of the Vast, 1, You red, don't say your white. grades, man. You don't say your grades. Oh yeah, well it's the same one, D minus. Kali of the Vast, one red, white, black for a legendary creature, human cleric. It's a two-two. Has -two. flying. Whenever Kali of the Vast attacks an opponent, you may put an angel, demon, or dragon creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped, and attacking that opponent. This is also an F. Okay, yeah, cool card for not for limited. Uh, never, never, ever, ever play this F. For mana two to that probably doesn't do anything else. So yeah, bye bye. Emerald medallion. Do you want to attack? Do you want to do you want to attack all the medallions at once? Yes, absolutely. Bloody Sunday. Uh, thank you. Fun day. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for the raid. We are on the. We are just wrapping up uh, the final grades for the tier list. Emerald Medallion and all the other medallions cost two mana and they are artifacts and they reduce the casting cost of your green, black, etc. spells. Which are all unplayable Fs because they are really not worth a full card. Um, they don't ramp you for effects or anything, just exactly for certain spells, not worth full cards. So just don't play them. F, 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 oh, Scotty. Uh, give them F's all down the line. Probably the blue one is like, ah, you can't even discount the Devoid spell. Yeah, bad. F. Mm. Uh, Junk Diver. Three mana for an artifact creature bird. It's a 1 1 flying. When Junk Diver dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, this is pretty bad. It's really understated. Good in a course, set, bad in this. This is like a D minus. Yeah, D minus. Too understated for this set, for the effect. Too understated. Like per what's, medallion, the, what's the best F. thing? Like the goblin that sacks itself for four damage? What? Like, is that the best, easiest way to put an artifact in the bin? The goblin that sacks itself for four damage? Ah, who cares, man, about that? Like, any artifact that you're getting, it's not good. All the medallions are F. Oh, somebody, uh, another mistake mentioned, there are devoid cards in blue, <laughs> which are not blue, so you're not discounting them, so it's even worse. Urza's Incubator for 3 mana, it's an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures, spells of the chosen type cost 2 less to cast. Again, sure, works with Eldrazi, works very, very well with Eldrazi, but uh, I don't know, I don't think you're gonna have enough. So, I'm gonna be on an F, because I don't think you're gonna have enough. And then there is a problem that you need to cast 2 of them, for this to be worth, uh, worth its cost, so not a big fan, just not worth the full card again, just an F. F. Which is in stark contrast to the next card, Warren Power Stone, which is 3 mana. 
uh, for an artifact, you can tap it. Sorry, it enters the battlefield tapped, and you can tap it for two mana. Uh, War and Power Stone is solid. I think it's solid. If you have a way to, like, like if you have a big mana deck, War and Power Stone can be extremely good at actually helping you power out your late game. Activate extra activated abilities. Uh, I think it's worth, I think this is a C plus. I take it relatively highly. Uh, like. I mean, I think that the, the blue-green card is much, much, much better because you can also draw a card and it's a creature. But I'm not mm. like big on a blue-green card. So on this one, I'm like a D. C plus for you, D from me. I think it's not going to be good in this set. Uh, better ways to ramp. D. Uh, I don't want it. It, it. Better ways to ramp? Like what? I mean, the green-blue creature. Uh, yeah, that, 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 is a, that is a better way to ramp, which is why I thought that was a B- in color. Then a green 1-2 Death Toucher that also doesn't only ramp, but it also fixes for you. Okay, that's not a better way to ramp. That is a better card. That is a better way to ramp. Better way to ramp doesn't the, mean, mean the, you're the ramping for, mo for more mana. That is okay. a better way to ramp. It's like, I don't want to ramp with All this right. much. I do want to ramp with that one. Better way to ramp. Like, sure, you can have a 10-mana okay, spell that wording. gets you... 10-mana spell that gets you five lands into the battlefield. You're never playing it. But it's the best... It's, it's, it's the worst way to ramp. But it gives... Come on, come on, come on, man. You're the, a native English speaker. Yeah, and, and I don't agree with your wording. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> Better way to ramp is not this ramps for more mana. <laughs> what, what does it mean then? It means that the card is just a better card, and it also ramps you. So I'm going to use that. Okay, to a better card means it's a better card. Okay, this is this is a worthless argument. No, 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 no! You're the worst argument. No, no this is a worthless argument. <coughs> you're argument. a worthless person. Your so what? You're the worthless. You're a worthless person. I right, just whip it out, Lola. You know what I mean. You know what it means. Yeah. I like uh, Barbarian Ring, which is a land and adds uh, red, and Barbarian Ring deals one damage to you. Threshold for red, tap, sacrifice, Barbarian Ring. It deals two damage to any target. Activate only if seven or more cards are in your graveyard. Um, this notably cannot act, add colorless mana, so you cannot. You have to take the damage. Um, I think this is an actual F. Yeah, F. Um, constantly taking damage is not great. Um, similar thing here, uh, target player draws 3 cards, and this card's 3 cards, activate only if 7 mark. It's always threshold with these ones. Uh, not worth... Not, it's gotta be a real powerful effect that you're just killing yourself constantly before you use it, so F. Uh, Deserted Temple, right? Mm -hmm. Which is um, tap to add colorless, 1 and tap to add untapped target land. I gave waste a D-, minus. I'm giving this a D-. minus. Sure, D-, minus. not good. This uh, untap doesn't cost, really does cost cost you two mana to get one mana. So but this is bad. I mean, this is so bad, man. This, man, this is an F. I'm giving this an F. I don't think you can play it. You it's, you get it's an F, so she, you can give this one an F. Yeah, it's so bad. It's so bad. Nesting. Uh, nesting. Nest. Yeah, for, go ahead. Hey, for you can tap it for colorless, and then you can pay one and tap it to move a counter from target permanent you control onto another target permanent only as sorcery. Okay, I can, okay, I, I can see this one. I can see this one in Golgari decks. Oh, I can fucking see this one as a C minus. <laughs> Do you want to give this a ceiling grade? Yes. C plus. Moving counters can be so good. You can also move counters like from adapted creatures and then adapt them again. Like if that's what you want. And just just like trigger all of these nice things. Persist. Oh, onto another target permanent. Yeah, you can like mine. Okay, there's one persist card. You can, but you can move the minus one minus one to a land, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I like this a lot. You can go with the sagas, right? Yeah. You, you can just like can... trigger the first two effects of the sagas all the time. You can move it to their their creatures, Lola. <gasps> Wait a second! But that's only one... Only that's one, one minus common one. creature. There's only one creature that cares about it, right? A common creature. A common bad, really bad creature. Okay. Still, uh, C plus ceiling, C minus is how highly I take it. Uh, Phyrexian Tower, Legendary Land. Tap to add colorless or tap to sacrifice a creature, add black black this is pretty good i like you can turn your spawns into double mana 
on the turn that you need them. Actually, no, just kidding. That's not how it works. That's not how the card works. <laughs> you tap the. <laughs> yeah. You can turn your spawn into a black mana. <laughs> yeah, you can turn your spawn into a black mana. Whoops. No, that's not how it works. The, car the cards. Ugh. Hold on. Let me think about this again. Um. Because the spawns are the main sack fodder, it really kind of defeats the the whole appeal of this to me. <laughs> if there was like another main token in the set, I'd be kind of into it, but I'm kind of off it. Stinky, stinky. I think this is a D. I think this is an F. I think it's super stinky. Okay. It doesn't. It kind of does ramp you, but <laughs> no, I don't. It doesn't ramp you with the to with those tokens. I really don't like it. It's kind of cool that you can sack creatures, I guess. Uh, when you need it, it's uh, oh, 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 sec creatures. Okay, D minus. Uh, you have a red, red uh, threaten effect. So you're stealing their creature and then sacrificing it with this. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. D minus. But in that deck, it's gonna be real nice. We are done with everything. There are a couple of special guests. So, guests, but there is such a small chance of them uh, happening, so we're gonna add them to the tier list, right, Scotty? They're already added. They're already there. We're just gonna update the grades uh, without uh, really reviewing them. Super small chance to get them, but you're gonna see them on the tier list. And that was the set review for Modern Horizons 3. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. GMT, that's 7 p.m. CEST, I'm gonna be playing Modern Horizons 3 Early Access. Scotty, you're gonna be skipping that, right? Yep. Because as you can see, Scotty doesn't stream during the week. For for now. Uh, <laughs> yes.